Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, we'll move to uh, secure computation um, uh, today. Let me um, go to the whiteboard. Okay. Um, let's see. It's in focus um, moderately. Okay, try to improve it. Okay, um, uh, so uh, multi party computation. Um, we'll start with um, uh, we'll start with uh, GMW. Um, and uh, uh, no, actually, sorry, sorry, I got uh, confused. A bit. Well, you know what? Uh, oh my goodness, I forgot which one is which. Okay, so I will call you. Um, I always uh, blank out on which one is which, it's embarrassing, and um, I will um, uh, tell you later. But uh, one is uh, uh, based on um, one is for um, uh, Boolean circuits. So you know I will write them together uh, without uh, committing uh, to which one is which. Uh, B G. Uh, yes. Um, uh, so so this is. Goldwasser, Mikali, with Gerson, and this is uh, Benor, Goldreich, with Gerson, and um, and let's uh, let's let's see. Um, one is for uh, Boolean circuits uh, and uses uh, oblivious transfer uh, as a tool, uh, which we'll introduce uh, uh, today. Trans transfer and uh, the other is for uh, arithmetic circuits uh, and it uses uh, secret sharing. Uh, this this one also uses the secret form of the secret sharing, but a very simple one, and uh, this uses a more general uh, secret sharing uh, over. Uh, over any field, uh, in particular Shamir uh, secret sharing. Okay, so uh, we'll introduce both tools. We'll see how far, uh, far how, how far we get, and uh, both of them will do uh, first uh, for uh, honest, so-called honest, uh, but curious. Uh, participants, um, in other words, passive attacker. So uh, the, the 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 first type of security we'll go after corresponds to uh, a passive adversary. So uh, think of uh, security of encryption against just uh, an eavesdropper, or a security of key agreement against just eavesdropper. Uh, versus an active attacker who is a man in the middle and you need uh, chosen ciphertext security of encryption um, and you need you need uh, authenticated key agreement right uh, or think about uh, zero knowledge only for uh, honest verifiers uh, versus zero knowledge against any uh, verifier right in really malicious ones Similarly, in general multi-party computation, we'll first go of, uh, for security when uh, participants uh, follow the protocol. But like in honest verifiers, your knowledge, we are concerned with how, what, you know, whether their view 
uh, leaks, uh, what their view leaks about the information, uh, the inputs of the of the of the good players of the non non adversarial players, right? So, what does the adversary learn uh, about good good people's um, uh, inputs, secret inputs? And then uh, uh, second is an upgrade uh, to uh, arbitrary uh, arbitrary. Uh, 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 mm, um uh, adversarial behavior okay and um okay so let's do the the boolean circuit based uh, secure computation first um now what is the goal of uh, secure computation so uh, uh Think of uh, a, a bunch of uh, entities on the on the network. We're going to call them players or parties. Um, each of which starts with some input. Okay, so um, for example, uh, these are uh, different hospitals. XIs are their medical databases. And uh, of of patients and you know uh, uh, their uh, medical histories, and they want to perform some joint computation. For example, see whether a correlation between some drug and the outcome, application of some drug and an outcome, you know, is a significant correlation. And of course, you can compute this just on your own database but let's say you know you want to compute it on a joint one uh, and perhaps get better uh, data in this way right and there is millions of other examples of where uh, computing on uh, uh, jointly held uh, data um, is beneficial uh, to 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 parties um, you know, a very different, but another sort of classic example is that uh, P2 holds a database, P1 holds a query into the database. Okay, well, let me, so, so far we started with inputs. And now let's say there is a function uh, which uh, taken these inputs um, creates outputs. So if these people gave uh, the inputs to this function, Um, uh, then the function computes uh, a value, uh, which is y1, y2, yn. It's a, uh, it's a uh, function on x1, uh, xn. Okay. So uh, we denote the output of the function not as a single value, but as a vector of values. Okay. And uh, what we would like of this, uh, so think of this uh, as, as a trusted party who given the inputs from uh, these n players, computes this function and then uh, returns uh, the, uh, each of these uh, output components uh, to the corresponding uh, party. Okay. Um, so let's say is okay. Um, now, so in our uh, medical uh, database computation example, this function is the uh, algorithm that uh, finds the correlations. You know, determines whether there is a correlation between the drug and an outcome. And let's say the outputs are informing these, these parties whether there is a correlation or not, and perhaps leaking some further information about, in the case that there is a correlation, you know, something about it, right? And um, we will only concern the case where this function is efficiently computable. Uh, so, well, computable in what model? So, for example, that there is, I mean, what does mean efficient, right? So there's an efficient algorithm. Um, 
but in all of these uh, results, we will convert, uh, we'll need to convert the algorithm uh, to a circuit. Okay. And, um, you know, as you know, software is reducible to hardware. So if there is a polynomial time algorithm, there is a polynomial size circuit, um, a Boolean circuit that computes uh, the same algorithm. Now, um, embedding computation into arithmetic circuits is not so obvious. There are fields over which uh, you can uh, perform this embedding. Uh, but uh, also, so arithmetic circuits, in fact, do imply uh, the, the uh, general computation. But uh, a lot of computation we, we want to compute in practice actually is an arithmetic circuit to begin with, right? So think of machine learning application where what happens with the data is that you perform some uh, weighted sums, okay? And then you compute the gradients and you know, the gradient descent algorithm. It's mostly arithmetic operations, uh, typically though over integers or uh, not over integers, over rationals. So how to embed efficiently these operations into a field is a question that you, you, you would want to solve in, in, that is relevant for practical efficiency of these. They also have uh, threshold gates, uh, right? Which are, you also have to render uh, somehow, right? So, but let's say, let's first look at these uh, general feasibility results and, and you know, worry about, um, uh, you know, what, how would you, uh, you know, take it to in, in next step uh, to practice, of course, later. Okay, um, now, so this is, uh, if there was a trusted party, uh, people could give their inputs to this trusted party. The trusted party would compute outputs and uh, they would be all happy if they can trust uh, this party for two things. First of all, uh, this party will not reveal individual inputs, right? Because these are medical databases, so you don't want to really give them away uh, to, 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 um, to the world. And secondly, that they are computing this function correctly, right? That they are not leaking the information to one party while erasing it from all the others. Okay. Um, so, so what's the security notion? Uh, so, okay. So, what is a multi-party computation protocol? Well, it's a protocol uh, that. Um, uh, these parties can uh, follow instead. Uh, so uh, a multi-party computation, uh, uh, commonly used acronym MPC, uh, is a protocol uh, which uh, basically in this case is a, a tuple of al uh, interactive algorithms P1, P2, da -da -da -da, P pi n. Uh, so this guy is going to follow the pi, pi one algorithm, um, okay, which will tell uh, P one to you know send some messages out, and P two will um, follow the P two pi two algorithm, um, perhaps receive the messages, perhaps reply something, right? So all of these are going to follow the prescribed algorithm. And it's an interactive algorithm, right? Taking messages and uh, receiving messages from other players and sending some messages uh, in response. Um, it will be important about like, what are the assumptions about this network? Um, so uh, if P1 sends a message to, he wants this message to be received by P2. Uh, is it guaranteed that it will be received? 
Is it guaranteed that it won't be hijacked and sent to PN instead? And on and on. Right? So typically, assume um, uh, a very strong uh, uh, network uh, security, okay? Give yourself uh, secure links uh, between uh, each uh, uh, PI and PJ. Okay, so if uh, P1, this protocol says that, you know, I'm generating some message and it's for PN, um, assume that adversary cannot read the content or change the content unless, you know, he is, uh, unless PN is an adversary. Uh, also, it might be used, it will be useful in these protocols to broadcast a message. So for uh, any of these parties to be able to send a message to all others. Now within the secure links, of course, this can be implemented, right? Like just send the same message to all others. Ah, except that if you are receiving a message, if you are P2 and you're receiving a message from P1 and P1 was supposed to broadcast this to all people in the group, you don't know whether the message that you that you got from P1 is the same message that P1 sent to other players. So that's the difference between uh, broadcast and 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 links. So assume also uh, broadcast uh, uh, channel. Um, so and, and the point of this is that it's reliable uh, uh, broadcast, meaning. There is a communication channel that, let's say, you are PN, and you received on this channel a supposed broadcast from P1. Then reliability of the broadcast means that all other honest parties received the same value from P1. Okay, P1 couldn't send one value to uh, P2 and another to P3 and another to P4. Okay. Okay. Also, uh, assume that the communication goes in rounds. So uh, synchronized um, uh, communication. Um, it's um, in practice, it's not very clear, especially on long distance communication, you know, that uh, how synchronized it is. So if um, here is the, the issue, let's say that this protocol tells everybody send a commitment to your uh, messages and then uh, receive the commitment from all others. And once you receive commitment from all others, broadcast a decommitment. Okay. Well, that simple commit decommit uh, procedure uh, should assure and uh, actually, okay. Uh, that it's a so-called coin tossing protocol. Like if you commit to, it basically assures that uh, your data that you committed to and the data I committed to are independent. If commitment is non malleable that's uh, recall from last time. Um, but what if some, party, uh, some party's commitment doesn't come? Uh, well, should you just go ahead and decommit? and treat this party as, uh, well, maybe they have a bad connection. Uh, but what if they then, then they, okay, so perhaps they are kicked out of the computation and now we simply compute the medical problem involving N minus one databases because the nth one seems to have technical issues. But maybe they don't have technical issues. They used the temporary, they wait so that to base their commitments on decommitments of others, right? So, um, or yeah, or even more subtle kind of uh, uh, attack where they, wait, they in fact received decommitment from all others, decided that the decommitted value, including their committed value, is not to their liking. And therefore they decided that it's better 
to just drop out because the decommitted values without them are in some sense better for the attacker than the decommitted values with the attacker, okay? So uh, these are uh, uh, real issues in, in, in these protocols, but uh, just for now, assume that uh, communication is synchronized. So they go in lockstep, everybody knows that they have synchronized clocks and um, somebody whose messages are not, uh, you know, uh, arrived, they are, um, well, okay, you know what, for now, just assume that uh, this is a binary thing. Like if you are in, you have to send uh, messages throughout and they will be de delivered. And uh, for now, uh, uh, assume uh, honest, uh, but curious uh, participants. Um, so uh, in particular, uh, these games where uh, and, and a party can uh, observe messages and then drop out from the conversation are disallowed. Okay, for at first. Okay, so this is a protocol. They follow uh, this, send messages, receive messages, and um, it, it goes uh, in some number of rounds, uh, you know, uh, and uh, some constant number of rounds. Uh, and uh, at the end, um, uh, this uh, protocol pi uh, tells them tells each party what is their local output. Okay. Um, uh, and now what do we want security-wise of this protocol pi i, uh, of this protocol pi? Uh, so the goal intuitively speaking is that uh, Engaging uh, in protocol pi, protocol uh, pi is like engaging in uh, a computation of app uh, given um, a trusted party. In other words, uh, uh, secrecy of your input is guaranteed. And uh, correctness of outcome, uh, correctness of output uh, is guaranteed. Okay. Um, and, um, but, well, under what assumption? So for now, we'll consider only honest but curious uh, participants. So therefore no one diverges from the protocol pi. In other words, the correctness of output for now will be a, a trivial consequence of completeness of the protocol, right? So as long as the protocol on proper input followed by everyone does compute this function f, on the contributed joint inputs, uh, then correctness follows, right? Correctness will be a concern, uh, you know, will be non-trivial once we upgrade uh, to arbitrary uh, behavior by a corrupt party. But secrecy of your input, uh, that is non-trivial, uh, right? Because uh, um, Okay, and, and first of all, secrecy against whom? Okay, who is the spy in the system when you have, you followed some algorithm on X, you assume that all these links are uh, secure. So a network adversary doesn't get anything from this. Uh, I mean, he gets, I guess, sizes of these messages, but, um, 
uh, which is actually a concern, right? Obviously, like if I put in a big database, presumably the protocol is going to send some big messages on my behalf. And if I put a tiny database, perhaps just from the size of the, these messages, ad network adversary can, uh, you know, conclude something about the inputs. Uh, so we have to eliminate that size leakage, but this is typical. Encryption does not protect, does not protect the size of the messages you encrypt. Likewise, MPC is not going to protect uh, some of your input. Uh, uh, so first disclaimer, um, uh, uh, accept uh, the size. Right, which is like uh, like the semantic security of encryption. So, um, in the security definition, we'll say, uh, okay, um, uh, okay, this multi-party protocol is better called uh, Pi for app. Okay, so each of these, uh, uh, each of the protocols that each party computes is really, um, the protocol must know what function it is uh, supposed to compute. Uh, these results are really compilers that take any function described as a Boolean circuit or as an arithmetic circuit and compile it to a multi-party protocol uh, for that function. In particular, uh, what function we are computing is not a secret, okay? So uh, also uh, function f uh, is public only uh, inputs uh, xi are protected. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, well, in what sense are they protected? Um, so the um, Uh, the T really it's uh, uh, the secrecy of your input is um, is uh, is a function of uh, each of the MPC um, mm -hmm. is uh, when people say uh, multi-party computation. Uh, Multi-party computation sort of quality, uh, one of the quality, uh, you know, parameters of the multi-party computation is the is the ad uh, adversarial threshold that they withstand. So uh, uh, the TN threshold MPC uh, says that uh, uh, the protocol is for uh, n is the number of uh, parties, and t is the threshold, is the uh, maximum uh, number of parties uh, such that uh, if uh, fewer or equal to t uh, parties are uh, corrupt. Um, and then um, inputs of uh, all honest parties are uh, uh, are hidden, are protected, uh, meaning hidden. Think of uh, T at first as just n minus one. Okay, that's the best uh, MPC from security perspective. Uh, and what would be the consequences be? 
the cost is like this. Uh, P1, when he gives X1 to an honest, to the trusted third party, he is concerned uh, with secrecy of his data X1, but he has no idea and no control about what inputs the other parties put in. Now, as, but whatever inputs they put in, function f is going to give uh, these uh, n minus one parties outputs, which are computation of f on inputs uh, where n minus one of these inputs were, uh, these people really could put whatever they wanted. P1 cannot control it. So the values that these people get, y2, y3, all the way to yn, will be results of this function on the input uh, that, you know, is the input that P1 cares about, which is his, or he writes P1's database, P1's input X1, and the inputs of the other players. Um, but if, if that's the game that P1 is willing to engage in, namely knowing what the function f is, P1 is willing to do the following. I will let n minus one people to compute these values, y2 to all the way to yn, on my database and any databases that they choose. And um, I will do that because I'm interested in Y1 on uh, the joint input. Perhaps function F uh, verifies some plausibility criteria about these inputs and sets all these outputs to null if the plausibility criteria are not met. That is certainly possible, right? And it will be part of the function f, and the function f is public. Uh, so it sort of it depends on what function f is. P1's willingness to participate in such a in such an exercise, right? Depends on function f. Um, for example, perhaps function f. Is the system really involves uh, two people, uh, okay, or perhaps X2 and Xn are databases, and X1 is the query, and function f is such that actually it sets all of these to null, whereas Y1 is the only output, and it's the output, and the function f, what it does is takes a query and a bunch of databases, and applies the query to each one, and y1 is the result. Okay, so p1, if that's the function f, then p1 should be very happy to participate, right? Because by design, function f doesn't leak anything uh, uh, to about the query x1 to uh, p2 to pn. Why would parties p2 to pn participate? Well, perhaps they know function f, and they know that, for example, it could compute some genomic uh, computation where the query is the, uh, some information about this guy's genome. Uh, the database is some correlation between genome and whatever, some health outcomes. And they're simply willing to provide the service, knowing that people, uh, that perhaps function f will also not allow the function to be queried on arbitrarily uh, crazy genomes whose goal is to extract maximum information from these databases, but F will also perform some sanity check, checks on this input. And on and on and on, right? So you can handle why people want to, would like to participate it by uh, setting the function F correctly. And now what the definition of security 
of what's the secrecy of your input is guaranteed, okay, is that engagement in protocol PI should give you the same guarantees as engagement for the trust party, trusted third party that just computes F. Meaning, if you start this protocol, the only thing that uh, these people can do, and let's take the simplified, the simplified but actually the hardest uh, security setting, where T is N minus one. So you want security, everybody wants security against everyone else. And uh, these uh, parties who are corrupt, are, uh, they can conspire together, meaning two things. The inputs they put in into these computations are actually correlated and arbitrarily chosen to extract maximum information about X1 in these outputs. But what this maximum information is, of course, depends on function F. So these correlated um, adversaries, which in this case of T equal N minus one, is really everyone else participating in the MPC, will first of all have a freedom to choose the inputs X to XN. However, they will do so with having no information about X1, because that's what this, this computation is here. F doesn't tell anyone about what the private input of P1 is. So these inputs have to be chosen independently of that one. It must be the same here. This protocol, whatever messages it sends based on X1, will not reveal anything to even N minus one corrupt participant. And in particular, and okay, and moreover, they had to, in some sense, commit to these inputs. And the outputs that they get are, well, whatever function f returns, given the input uh, x1 of the sole honest party in the system p1, and given the x, the vector of inputs, that the a dishonest parties contributed. Okay. Um, and and um, this guarantee uh, has to be true uh, for all honest parties. So um, if, uh, you know, if we are um, T is, let's say, half of N. So you consider arbitrary half subsets as corrupt ones. Then the guarantees should be that for any vector of inputs of the good guys, uh, again, it should work like the trusted function computation. So that vector of inputs, adversary uh, can pick the, the inputs of the, the, the bad half of the players arbitrarily, but having no information about the vector of inputs from the good guys. And then the function is computed on the good guys, comma, bad guys input uh, vector of inputs. And the only thing that the adversary gets is the subset of these outputs that corresponds to is the vector of outputs uh, given to the corrupt players. And uh, this uh, protocol pi would have the same guarantees. Uh, so uh, the guarantee um, we cannot simply say that let's say we would like to say okay, how about just use the the same notion as in semantic security of encryption? The out output. How is X1 hidden? Well, whether P1 started with X1 or X1 prime, for any X1, X1 prime, the view of the uh, bad guys is indistinguishable. Well, 
you cannot say that because f depends on x1, x1 prime. Therefore, the outputs of the bad guys depend on x1. And perhaps in the case of x1 and in the case of x1 prime, the output of f that is given to the bad guys for free, so to speak, even in this trusted system, will reveal some information about uh, the query. And in particular, perhaps this vector is clearly distinguishable in the case this value was x1, and in the case this value was x1 prime. So you cannot, uh, so that doesn't quite work, right? But uh, uh, the security definition will, the formal one, I mean, so here is the intuition. Anything that the bad guys, so, so here, you know, in this picture, when I assume that everyone is corrupted except of P1, then it's really, this is the view that they get from the computation, right? Because they're all cohorts. It really doesn't matter what they send to one another. They're all bad. So you can just as well assume they're run by a single bad entity that, that pretends to be N minus one players. But really, it's just one who does, uh, who, well, for now, they have to still pretend to be n minus one players and they have to follow the protocol. But given the view of messages they get from P1, uh, the protocol is a secure MPC if this view is simulatable. In other words, does not give any more information than that is simulatable from the vector of inputs that the bad guys put in and the vector of outputs that they get back. So there's two things that they get for free. They're able to put in any inputs they want, and then they get back the outputs vector. Uh, yes, computation of f on their inputs and this protected input x1. That information might reveal some information about x1. But these two, input and output of the bad players, suffice to simulate all of this. So intuitively, the protocol is secure if, uh, so uh, security, uh, means a simulatability um, uh, of uh, P1 uh, uh, traffic, basically, right? P1's messages from uh, the X vector and the Y vector of uh, corrupt parties. Okay, so uh, security will uh, formally stated will be that the stuff that P1 sends in the MPC protocol is simulatable from this vector, X2, X of bad uh, players, and the output of the bad players. It, what does it mean that it's simulatable? It means that it gives no information than the inputs of the simulation, right? So like in the uh, definition of zero knowledge, why is zero knowledge not giving any witness any information about the witness? Because it's simulatable from the statement. In other words, the verifier who knew the statement that is being proven learned nothing more than the statement just like that, the same technical notion of simulatability will allow us to claim, to, to, to model, that an MPC protocol revealed to an arbitrary set of corrupt planes nothing more than this arbitrary set of corrupt players would have learned in the ideal system. The system where there is this magic third, trusted third party 
to whom everybody is allowed to specify inputs. And this party will compute f on it and then give outputs resulting from computation of f. The bad guys specify their inputs and they get their outputs. That is the behavior of f. And if you understand f, you, it's your decision whether you want to participate in such a thing or not. And how many times, etc. Uh, and the MPC, by the simulatability uh, definition, would reveal nothing more than uh, this idealized system. Okay, so uh, maybe this is a good place. I mean, like, uh, do you do 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 do, do you get it? Or like, do you get the intuition or just going, you know, um, or you have some questions? Of course, we are just starting, right? So, uh, um, um, So the so here is the uh, a slightly more formal um, uh, 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 definition uh, pi uh, uh, pi f is uh, uh, MPC uh, for uh, f uh, with uh, TN threshold. Uh, um, and first, mm, uh, honest uh, but curious. Uh, so for passive, uh, uh, the passive attack helps. If uh, for every uh, subset uh, bad of the set of uh, uh, participants, um, uh, such that the size of the bad ones is uh, at most t, okay, the, the, the maximum uh, uh, threshold of tolerable uh, um, adversaries, okay. Uh, for every subset of the, the following um, mm, uh, holds, uh, for all um, inputs x uh, good, uh, uh, let uh, g be uh, the remaining players, p1, pn, uh, with the bad ones removed, right? And uh, uh, by xg, I mean uh, the set of inputs for i in good, and by xb, I mean a set of inputs uh, for i in bad, right? So for all inputs of the good players, and for all inputs uh, of the bad players, uh, uh, there is, okay, another, maybe like here, there exists an efficient, uh, algorithm sim, a simulator algorithm, such that uh, for all these inputs, uh, the view of uh, uh, players in G, in B, uh, uh, the view of these players in uh, protocol uh, pi uh, on these inputs, so xb, xg for the good guys and xb for the bad guys, is computationally indistinguishable from uh, what simulator would output if he's given his input, the input of the bad guys, and the vector of the inputs 
from the outputs of the bad guys uh, where uh, the, the, the y vector is f on the x vector. So, uh, you know, up to the ordering of the players, the y vector is the output of the good guys and the output of the bad guys, and the vector of the inputs is the inputs of the good guys and the inputs of the bad guys, right? So, um, of course, you know, these vectors are just, it should be indexed like uh, y1, y2, yn, and, and, and so the input. So which one is good, which one is bad is not necessarily the way I drew here that, you know, the first uh, n minus t is good and the, the last t is bad. But and this is just ordering, right? So um, it would just complicate the notation. But that is the um, the notion of honest but curious uh, secure uh, multi-party computation. Okay, and and in this picture, you know, this is the the y b, and this is the x b. Okay. Let's see the, um, uh, so um, uh, first uh, result is um, uh, uh, secure uh, MPC uh, for um, honest but curious participants uh, with maximum threshold. Okay. And, um, Okay, and um, it is embarrassing, but I don't remember which of these two <laughs> that is. Um, and um, for simplicity uh, of uh, presentation, uh, um, um, we will show, or at least at first we'll show it, uh, we will show it for uh, just two players. Okay, so uh, there are just two players engaging in the computation. Um, and um, uh, and and this result will also uh, assume uh, that f uh, is represented. Um, as a Boolean circuit. Okay, or uh, or uh, C of F. Okay, but uh, so um, a Boolean circuit, so ands, ors, nots, right, and uh, all the Boolean gates, uh, Boolean logic. Um, okay, um, essential tool uh, that we will need here is an oblivious transfer. OT. So let's first uh, uh, look at the tool. Uh, Mm, uh, one out of two uh, OT uh, is uh, the following protocol. You have a sender and a receiver. The sender has two messages, M0 and 1, and the receiver has a bit. They follow some protocol. That's an oblivious transfer protocol such that the sender should learn nothing from this protocol, okay, conceptually. And the security intervention will be that will capture that. What is there for sender to learn? Just one thing, the bit uh, of the receiver. Uh, receiver learns the message 
of these two that is indicated by his cho cho choice bed. Uh, so that's the functionality of the of the OT, and security property should be for us for well, a receiver is concerned. Does the sender learn anything about my bit? OT is secure if the sender doesn't, even if he's malicious. The security from, from the other side, from the sender's point of view, should be, I do not know which of these two messages the receiver will learn, but I know that he will learn only one. It is guaranteed by OT that, it will be that he will learn only one. And nothing uh, should be leaked uh, about uh, the opposite message, right? The um, not B. Um, because the, uh, the security uh, from security for from the that sender learns nothing is easy to state. Um, so, uh, so completeness, right? Completeness is that um, R mm, always gets uh, MB from the protocol, right? Uh, uh, security uh, for uh, honest receiver is that S learns nothing. Okay, well, this is easy to, enough to state. Uh, the view uh, for every efficient uh, S star, uh, if S star's view with the receiver whose input is zero is indistinguishable from S star's view against the receiver whose input is one. Okay. Uh, now, what about security uh, for S? Well, that's harder to state because, you know, if we knew that the receiver bit is zero, then we would say the sender given some M0 and any M1, let's say M1, M1, and uh, the same sender which has the same M0 but a different M1, these two are indistinguishable. The thing is that you know, it's not clear that this bit, perhaps receiver. So um, let's do it for honest, uh, but curious uh, receiver. Uh, so uh, for honest, but curious uh, receivers. Um, okay, for, for at first. Uh, and and uh, worry about the adaptive uh, about the security against uh, active attackers uh, later. At, at first, in any way, we will use it only for MPC protocols uh, that uh, that are that only guarantee security against uh, uh, passive attackers that follow the protocol, right? So in that case, we'll just say uh, for every M0 M1. And M1 prime, uh, the view of the receiver uh, who chooses the first message uh, talking to a sender who has M0 and M1 is indistinguishable from a view of the receiver who chooses this uh, M0 uh, talking to a sender who has M0 and M1 prime. Uh, and of course, uh, the flip of this, right? So for any M0, M0 prime, M1, uh, receiver who starts with bit one, uh, talking to, uh, to, to this is indistinguishable from the uh, same receiver talking to uh, a, a, a sender who has a different uh, message, right? So if the receiver starts on bit zero, uh, M1, he has no information about M1 computationally. He cannot distinguish executions of S on different M1s. 
and if he chooses this first second message, then uh, he can tell no difference between s who uh, put different m zeros. Okay. Um, uh, how would you realize this? Um, well, actually, um, uh, you can realize this efficiently. Um, OT uh, from uh, 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 GDH. Um, and um, it will actually have uh, uh, so uh, like uh, Elkamap or uh, Diffie Hellman uh, key exchange, right? Um, Okay. There is uh, actually uh, many ways um, uh, to do it, uh, but here's one. Um, well, actually, let's uh, let's actually do it from uh, any um, homomorphic encryption, right? And um, uh, and we will do it from any uh, additively homomorphic encryption. So. Um, in other words, assume that uh, there is a, a encryption E such that E of um, uh, encryption of X, uh, there is some operation on the ciphertext space that's denoted with a, with a multiplication such that uh, encryption under the same public key of X and Y is uh, an encryption of uh, X plus Y. So there is some uh, the, the encryption works on a, uh, the, mesh, the mesh space of an encryption is a group with an additive, with the additive operation, group operation denoted with additive notation. And uh, the ciphertext also form a group. And there we denote that group with the multiplicative notation because that's what it's going to be when we instantiate it in Al Kamal. And um, um, you know what? I will first uh, present it. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, this guy sends a ciphertext, which is uh, first he picks the public. No. Uh, who picks a public key? Uh, this guy. He picks a public key and a ciphertext, which is an encryption of a bit. Okay, this guy will send two ciphertexts, uh, C0 and C1. And I want mm, C0 to be an encryption of M0 if and only if, uh, if uh, B is zero, uh, but, um, but if uh, the bit is one, then I want this ciphertext to be randomized. So it's an encryption of a random value. And likewise, I want C1 to be an encryption flip of this, right? So it will be an encryption of M1 if uh, this choice bit is one, 
and I want this to be an encryption of a random value uh, if the bit is zero. So we will use the homomorphism of encryption and the fact that uh, sender does have an encryption of this bit. Yes? By semantic security of an encryption, this leaks no this doesn't leak computationally to a computational attacker information about the bit. But perhaps you can create these encryptions uh, with these properties. So how can you use the homomorphism? Okay. Uh, well, you can, if you multiply an encryption C with an encryption of, uh, of some value, what do you get? It's an encryption of, uh, um, actually, uh, you need to do something else. So if you, um, what is ciphertext exponentiated to M? This is C times C times C uh, M times, right? So this is the ciphertext is a group with the multiplication. So therefore you can exponentiate, yeah? And efficiently because you square and multiply multiplication, right? Exponentiation. Uh, what is this in the plain text group? It's an encryption of uh, B plus uh, B M times. So what you did is that you took a product in the base group. Okay, so this is uh, an encryption of B of M if B is one, an encryption of zero if B is zero. Okay, so um close to this, but not yet. Um, now, if I, can I get uh, an encryption of not B, okay, to flip of the bit? Well, this is just an encryption of one minus B. So it's an encryption of one, divided in the group by encryption of B. So it's an encryption of one uh, divided by C. Uh, the target group of ciphertext group is a multiplicative group, so I can divide. I can take inverse between it. Okay. Uh, So for example, well, why would I want to do this? Uh, because if I take ciphertext to R uh, for a random R in order of the group, right? Because, uh, okay, so that by the same token, is an encryption of uh, uh, R times the bit, uh, and that is an encryption of zero if uh, if the bit is zero, and it's an encryption of the random value, namely R. Uh, I mean R uh, if the bit is one. Okay. So now I just need to combine them. I can, I can, I can create an encryption. Uh, sort of, this is a conditional encryption. It either gives me a message or a zero. And uh, this method gives me either an encryption of zero or an encryption of, of a random. And also, I can go from, you know, if this guy is zero, I can make it a one uh, using this trick. So let's combine uh, these uh, together to, 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 to create uh, this. So what should be the C0? So C0 should be 
uh, m0 if uh, the bit is one. So I should flip the bit using this and then uh, exponentiate it to m0. So if the bit is zero here, then this bit is one. And by exponentiating, I'm going to encrypt M0. Uh, and if this bit is uh, uh, one, then this bit is zero. And by exponentiating, I encrypt it as zero. Um, So this actually is suffices for an uh, honest but curious receiver. If he did uh, put, uh, so this would be it would be enough to 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 do this. Okay, because if this guy really follows the protocol and encrypts either one or zero. Uh, then uh, C zero is an encryption. Then, then we are in in, in the correct what what uh, uh, we are we are not modeling this. Uh, simply, uh, this is as an encryption of C zero is an encryption of zero if the bit is one, right? Because this is an encryption of zero. Two M zero is to give zero, uh, and 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 this is an encryption of zero if uh, C is an encryption of zero, and it's an encryption of M1 if C is an encryption of one. So in fact, just send, simply sending this out already accomplishes uh, what we want against honest but curious R. Uh, but uh, how to deal with, uh, we can basically for free upgrade this to security against a dishonest receiver who, uh, Pick some other bit. Okay. Well, also he might put a wrong public key that is not even a public key at all, and he could put in a ciphertext that is not really a ciphertext. Except that in these groups, every group element is a valid public key, and for Ergomal, every two group elements form a valid ciphertext of something. Okay. So, so in 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 these uh, prime order groups, you don't have that problem. Uh, um, so the only remaining case is uh, perhaps this is not an encryption of any of either zero or one, but an encryption of some other value. And and then what happens here? Uh, whatever that value is, uh, this is an encryption of one minus uh, b times m zero. And this is an encryption of uh, B times M1. And if B is, let's say, two, then this is minus M0, and this is two M1. So he gets information about uh, both. Yeah. So uh, let's add this, uh, this thing. In the case, that C is zero, I get an encryption of M zero here. But I also want to use, uh, I want to randomize this, that if C is one, uh, if C is zero, the randomization will not trouble me. So I'm going to do this. So, uh, this is um, an encryption of B times R. If B is zero, this does nothing. And if uh, B is non-zero, it completely randomizes it. So the whole thing, yes, is an encryption of uh, M zero plus 
t r minus m0. And uh, now I am here. If the bit was zero, this random for for random uh, r, this uh, this component plays no role. It drops out, and I'm here. But if the bit was anything else but zero, uh, then this is a random uh, value, a random element of the group. Ma if it's a prime order, then multiplying by any non-zero shift is is still uh, you are in the a random element in the group, except it's not zero, and therefore this is a one-time path. And I do the same here. So I take e one. Now I take a flip of the bit and multiply it by another random offset, which is independent. And now what is this k in the end? Well, this is uh, m1 times b plus uh, 1 minus b r prime. OK, for a random r prime. So again, if b is 1, then this drops out, and this becomes m1. If b is not one, then this is a random value. So it's a one-time path in the group, whatever this part is. OK? Um, so um, this is, yes. And um, now DDH is. Uh, uh, I mean, El Gamal is not exactly additively homomorphic. Um, here is um, here is a, a textbook uh, El Gamal is additively uh, homomorphic on a small, but uh, with decryption. Uh, only on small uh, message space. Uh, how would I implement it? An encryption of a message under QY is, is G to the R, Y to the R, G to the M. This is additively homomorphic, right? Uh, an encryption of uh, X times an encryption, uh, well, of M1, an encryption under the same key of M2, R, well, GR1, YR1, GM1, uh, component wise multiplied by the second ciphertext, which is, which is this, uh, and, and you got G to the sum uh, and uh, Y to the sum of the randomness times G to the sum of the messages. Right, so this is an encryption. Uh, random encryption of M1 plus M2. Well, great, except that you cannot decrypt, right? So decryption under the discrete log, so Y is G to the X, of, uh, of uh, a pair, right, of a ciphertext, uh, of a ciphertext which is a pair, is uh, C1 to the X to the minus X times uh, C2. Right, um, uh, but that is uh, G to the M. So uh, the decryption, uh, you know, you do this uh, and uh, take a discrete logarithm of result. Uh, so uh, M has to be small, short, or otherwise, uh, yes. Uh, so if x is short, the discrete logarithm takes square root uh, of the uh, how long does it take? Uh, it's uh, two to the size of m over two. Yeah, uh, time uh, for a 
for a generic discrete dog algorithm. Uh, discrete dog algorithm. Uh, yeah, baby, baby step, giant step. Um, so, uh, but um, it's okay uh, if um, uh, the message space are bits. Yes, or any other short strings. And in fact, that's how we're going to use it in uh, the MPC algorithm. Um, maybe I should take a poll with you. Um, do you want me to uh, do the algorithm? Because we are basically, uh, we ran out of time, so we can, uh, we can do the MPC next time, or, or, or we can, you know, continue. I think, I don't know, ten more, fifteen min more minutes. But um, it's up to you. Uh, could you explain first the problem with the algorithm here? Oh, hold on a second. Understand. I have volume too low. Let's say it again. So, could you explain algorithm again here? Uh, I'm not sure. What is C1 and C2? Oh, the the algorithm decryption. Yeah. Oh, this is C1, uh, this is C2. Okay, but so is, isn't this like the usual Ilgamal? Shouldn't the yes, it is. It is. be efficient? Except, yes, it is, except that um, in order to make it additively homomorphic, I encrypted not M, but G oh, to the M. Oh, I see. But otherwise, it's not going to be additively homomorphic, uh -huh. right? So it's not so, exactly Ilgamal. So no, it's not. It's a textbook algorithm. It's it's called um, uh, shifted uh, or in exponent. Uh, so yeah. So instead of encrypting the message in the base group, mm -hmm. I encrypt an exponentiation of the message. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, otherwise, I don't get the additive homomorphism. Uh, the truth is that I can do two things. First of all, okay, I can do several things. So there are encryptions which are uh, natively additively homomorphic. Uh, Palier encryption for um, over um, for our same modulus. Uh, uh, Goldwasser Michaelis additively homomorphic. Also, it's an encryption just on bits, but in fact, in this application, it will suffice. Uh, also, uh, lattice uh, crypto systems are natively additively homomorphic, except that they don't work on 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 prime order groups. So, so some of these arguments uh, will will be more complex. Um, and also just distinguishing whether everything is really an encryption or not is not is not um, obvious there. Uh, but I can also uh, just uh, change this OT to uh, adopt to multiplicative homomorphism of the encryption. Okay, and and that's what uh, the, the the basic algamal is, and uh, it's just simpler to present for an additively. Uh, homomorphic encryption. Uh, that's, by the way, not the only OT that is around. Uh, this OT has a interesting property that receiver secrecy is computational, right? If you break encryption, you get this bit. The sender's prote protection is unconditional. Uh, these are encryptions of random values. And even this guy who knows everything about the secret key and, um, you know, can maliciously pick the secret, I mean, whatever, he knows the secret key. So, so security of this is not based on security of encryption. Um, but if uh, there is this uh, if every encryption, regardless of the key, forms this homomorphism between the base group 
and you know exactly what group it is and what the order are so that you can do this type of randomization, then you have perfect secrecy. One of these messages is completely randomized and only the other can potentially leak information and only about one of these messages, right? Because these two cases cannot happen at the same time. Uh, you can also use the same DGH to flip, uh, to design an OT, not more efficient, not, not, not more expensive, just rethink how you're going to use homomorphism so that receiver information theoretically protect his choice bit. Uh, but uh, C0 and C1 leak conditionally. So it's this guy who picks the public key. And uh, this guy doesn't encrypt, but commits, basically using Pedersen commitment to the bit. And then you weave the commitment into these uh, to have the, the same effect. And um, obvious question, uh, can you have an OT that is perfect on both sides? And, and similarly, as in commitments, you can't. OK, so. Um, uh, OK, so shall we do this or shall we uh, wait till next time? It's OK, either way. Uh, for me, it would be OK. OK to do what? To, to do now. OK. Uh, Jonathan, is you still, still around? Um, I, I, I'll, I'll stay, uh, but I may leave a little early. OK. Uh, I mean, either way, if it's if it's recorded, I I'll be fine. So I do, okay, do whatever uh, works. You know what? Uh, I think it's, it's like, let's just uh, do it with a with a fresh mind and like without uh, hiring. So, um, yeah, sorry. I I shouldn't be. I just now realized. Okay, we're already over time, and uh, let's just do, do it in a peaceful way um, um, uh, next time. Okay. So if uh, if you if you don't have uh, do you have some you know questions to some other questions to the stuff. Okay. Um. No, okay. You know, uh, so, um, okay, what, let me, let me just uh, sketch this now because I can sense um, some um, disappointment. Um, so, um, well, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, we will, so you have to, two, two parties which have uh, their inputs. Uh, but I want to re rename um, the, 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 the input because I want to be able to index the bits within it. So I will recall uh, P1 on input X, which is a bit string. And uh, uh, P2, I will call his input Y, uh, and it's likely a, a, a bit string. Uh, here N is the size of people's inputs, uh, not the number of players. And uh, let F be the uh, a Boolean circuit. So uh, some uh, there's input wires x1, xn, and y1, uh, yn. And apply to these wires um, is uh, I take 
some two wires and I put them through some gate. Uh, so uh, this is the first gate. And I have an output wire. And then, and then uh, you know, perhaps in parallel, perhaps uh, sequentially, right? I mm, use some other uh, bits and put them through another gate and so on and so forth. Uh, perhaps I take the same input, perhaps a different one. Uh, the, compute, the, the circuit proceeds and I can take um, outputs, the, the, the output wires, and of course put them as inputs to some next uh, Boolean gate, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this would be G5, and so forth, right? So this is uh, a Boolean circuit. At the end, I have some wires uh, that determine the output bits. And um, so here my notation is X and Y are inputs uh, of uh, P1 and P2. And Z is an output. Um, now, uh, ah, so my original notion of uh, of secure computation was that uh, if there are two people coming in, there's going to be two outputs one for P1 and one for P2. Um, so, um, well, let me um, uh, first, therefore, I will do the following um, sort of simplification trick. Uh, uh, it suffices uh, to consider um uh, mpc uh, for f where uh, all where uh, outputs all outputs are equal and uh therefore just called uh, one thing right so i e uh, f uh, on x1 xn simply computes a single value y and uh, gives y to each player. Now, why is that? Uh, so this is an ob observation about uh, about MPC. Um, mm, why? Because if we are constrain ourselves to this type of single input, single output uh, uh, function functions. We, in fact, can emulate all others. So, um, assume you start with the, you, what you really want to compute is the function that has uh, different outputs uh, for different players. Okay. But I want to force this function into this one. Um, define uh, f. Uh, so these are the real inputs of the players, and these are the real outputs of the players. Define f on uh, uh, on uh, x1 to xn to be, well, first of all, uh, let xi be always a pair of the real input and the randomness, okay, uh, where uh, Ri is chosen at random by player i, uh, and the size of Ri is uh, the size of the output, uh, uh, is the size of the output uh, that this player gets. Okay, so let's assume that the sizes of all those inputs are fixed. So this function basically tells you how long all the inputs are and how long all the outputs are, okay? If the function is implemented as a circuit, uh, then this is a given, right? Uh, well, you know, any circuit, we have to specify how many wires 
P1 controls, how many bits uh, they input, how many wires P2 has to contribute, and we know exactly the number of wires that are that the circuit outputs. Okay. Um, so uh, if the X1 input, Xi input is really a pair of a true input Xy hat and a randomness, which is a random value chosen from the size of the expected outputs of a hat. And, and what we do is that we, the output here is, is a concatenation of the real output XOR the randomness that the first party supplied concatenated with the real output of the second party XOR the randomness that they supplied, etc. Um, okay, where Y1 hat, Y2 hat, etc is the output of the real function on the real input. So this function is, uh, the, the, take, does this, parses the inputs of everybody as real input and a randomness. Then it runs the inner circuit for F hat on the real inputs, gets the vector of outputs, because it's a multi-output uh, function, and takes these outputs and creates a single output from it. How? By using the randomness inside of players one input as a one-time path to encrypt players one's output, and using the randomness contributed by P2 to encrypt as a one-time path P2's output. And this is a single value called Y. So why computing this function F is as secure as computing F hat? Uh, because yes, it leaked information to everyone, but the information was a one-time encipherment of everyone's output under their own one-time path. So it leaks nothing except to the party who knows the corresponding one-time pad, which was the intended receiver of uh, the corresponding output, right? Okay, so, so we can only consider uh, these, uh, this simplification. Okay. Uh, so these will be the, uh, let's call uh, this, th these wires uh, form um, uh, form the output wires. Well, uh, as in most or all MPC protocols, the protocol would uh, go in three phases. In the first phase, phase one, uh, each party uh, secret shares uh, its uh, all its, its its inputs. Uh, phase two, uh, uh, protocol it computes. Uh, the circuit, so this uh, thing is the circuit uh, C on uh, secret shares from uh, secret shared inputs uh, to secret shared outputs. And uh, phase three is that they will uh, each output. Uh, each output is uh, reconstructed 
uh, from the secret sharing. Okay. Um, in the case of the uh, XOR uh, computation based on OT, um, the phase one. So uh, I have to describe to you the secret sharing, and it will be very simple. Uh, secret sharing uh, of uh, of uh, any value um, of uh, any value v is uh, a pair v uh, one v uh, two uh, such that say XOR uh, to V and uh, uh, and uh, uh, each of these VI is individually uh, random. So if you only see V1, it looks random to you. If you only see V2, it looks random to you. If you see them both, you reconstruct the value. And uh, so it's, yeah. So this is an so-called XOR sharing. Uh, and uh, this property assures that reconstruction, right? If you surrender both shares, you can reconstruct. And this property assures secrecy. As long as you have just one share, this tells you nothing about the values that the secret shared. So what is the phase one of, uh, in the case of this protocol? Each of the bits is going to be secret shared by P1 between P1 and P2. In other words, for each of the bits, X1, X2, Xn, P1 will uh, choose a random share for P2 and compute his own share by simply XORing the real value. So let's say X1, XOR the share that he gave to P2. And then uh, this property will be, right? If the shares are computed this way, then this uh, cons uh, constraint is satisfied. P2 does the same, right? Symmetrically. For all his inputs, uh, he creates a random shares of these inputs, send them to P1, and keeps the XORs of the real values and the shares that, uh, that were sent to P1. At this point, for every input wire, um, uh, yes, uh, they form, they hold uh, secret sharings of these values. So uh, after uh, phase one, each uh, uh, wire uh, W is secret shared, uh, i.e. Uh, P1 holds uh, W1, P2 holds uh, w2 uh, such that uh, w1 xor w2 is equal to the w on that wire. And on the input wires, you know, w is either xi or yi, uh, you know, as, as required, right? Depending on the, on which wire we're talking about, you know, each wire contributes to one of these input bits. Um, the phase two computation simply proceeds. The only thing I need to show is how do I go, how do I compute any Boolean gate when my inputs are secret shared and I want my outputs to be secret shared as well. And I want the following property. Uh, for honest but curious attack uh, participants at first, that 
if the input view of the player one was just shares of these two, then all he gets in uh, as an output is a share of the output, but he learns nothing about what was the secret value here, what was the secret value shared here, and what is the secret value shared in the outputs. So each party goes from local share of these two to a local share of the of the output. Uh, and it is symmetrical for, for either party. So of course for input wires, they hold shares, but they actually know the corresponding inputs. You know, P1 knows it for he, for the for his input wires, P2 knows for his input wires, right? Or her input wires. But as we go down, uh, in particular, you know, in the first Boolean gate already, uh, P1 will only hold a share of the output. There are some trivial Boolean gates, right? Well, like, for example, if this gate is an, is an end and you know that your input wire was a, was a zero, so you know that this secret sharing is a secret sharing of zero. Well, this is the kind of information that you know because you know function f. So you know that the first few, you know, perhaps function f is trivial and uh, all of these uh, Boolean gates are completely fixed once P1 fixes his input bits. But I mean, that's a case where multi two party, multi party computation for such function is just not a, you know, it's not a reasonable thing to engage with. It's either there is no point in engaging such a thing because one party can predict the output or it's revealing in some obvious way about the information of, of one party, et cetera. But the meaningful part, uh, functions are those where there are some bits of output which are functions of, of, of both of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, so whatever information X P1 has about these wires, it's, it's lost after, you know, at some point in the circuit. Okay. Uh, and if I show you such a building block, then the whole phase two will just uh, proceed, apply this building, bro building block protocol to each gate one after another. Uh, perhaps some of them can be computed, uh, you know, in parallel, because all those secret sharings do not depend on that one, right? So a circuit has a natural notion of depth, uh, right? Which is, what is the longest path? Uh, that's the depth of the circuit. Uh, uh, for many of these protocols, this one included, including uh, the comp uh, all circuits, all gates in one uh, depth of the circuit can be computed in parallel. Um, and then finally, what do we do in, uh, you know, if I give you this block, then at the end, uh, they will end up holding sh secret shares of each of these output values. Well, but the reconstruction is trivial. They just sent their shares to the other party, right? And and this way, uh, because this output is can be constructed in public, because it's like like this one, right? Like it's okay to broadcast uh, to share this single output, because it really has an encoding of individual outputs in it. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's look at this. Uh, uh, you know, the whole thing comes down to how to compute uh, this building block, right? And so let's zoom down on it. Uh, this is some Boolean gate uh, G, and um, and uh, let's call these inputs X y and z okay these are the three wires uh, in this circuit okay uh, no longer the uh, real input to the whole circuit and the real output of the whole circuit just input wires of that gate and an output wire of that gate and 
in um, in the multi-party protocol, we have two uh, players. And where are we? Well, this guy has a share of X of the X wire, and this guy has a share of X wire. Uh, uh, and uh, this guy also has a share of the Y wire, and this guy has a share of the Y wire. And we know that uh, these two XOR uh, to the real input, and also these two XOR uh, to the real input. And given these inputs, they want to engage in some protocol such that at the end, uh, uh, so. We want this mysterious protocol. I mean, what this protocol has to accomplish is that given such outputs, inputs, what they want to compute is a sharing of uh, the output value, where Z1 uh, X or Z2, uh, sorry, Z1 X or Z2 is the Z value, which is the output of G on inputs X and Y. So the sharing has to be the sharing of the output of the circuit of this Boolean gate on the secret shared input X and the secret shared input Y. Okay, and we are going to do this using an OT. So um, how? Well, a Boolean uh, gate is um, it's really a table uh, which is not very long, right? Uh, the Boolean uh, gate uh, G uh, is a table like this, and let's call it um, uh, G zero. And uh, on input zero one, there's some value G one here. On input one zero, there's value G two. Uh, uh, you know what? Maybe this is better if I do this. And on value G one, uh, I get a value G one one. Uh, so every Boolean gate is characterized by this four bits. So, for example, and is zero 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 one, and or is zero one one one, etc. But the circuit is public, so everybody knows its wiring, and everybody knows which gate we are computing, and everybody knows, you know, therefore this table. For every gate, it's this table is fixed. Mm, so, so G uh, I uh, G I J is an output of the gate G on inputs I and J. I for X, J for uh, Y. Uh, so this is uh, now without introducing uh, new variables, let me do this. Z, which is a G on X, Y, is really just the X, Y entry in this, in this table. Let uh, P2 uh, pick its share of Z first. Uh, which is Z2. And uh, these sharings, by the way, are sharings of bits, right? So when we said that you're going to randomly secret share 
each, each value here is a bit. So these shares are bits um, as well, right? Um, so you just pick a random bit. Um, and uh, then this choice of Z2, uh, this implies that what Z1 uh, should be is the uh, Z2, XOR uh, G of uh, X uh, Y. Yes. Um, now, because uh, G is a uh, is a public. Uh, this is a public table. Everybody knows the description of which which, and which gate we are computing. Uh, also, uh, P2 knows shares of X2, Y2. So, what we are looking for is a protocol that would do the following. One, on each uh, x1 and uh, y1, we'll want to enter them into the protocol. Uh, uh, P2 Well, let me rewrite it like this. So this is V2 XOR. Uh, um, G indexed with, indexed with X X2, XOR, X1, and Y2, XOR, Y1. Uh, P2 knows what are P2's inputs. Now, he already chose this share that he eventually will get. Uh, he knows uh, x2 and uh, y2, and he also knows this uh, g, um, g00, g01, uh, g10, uh, g11. Uh, and in fact, we don't care. Uh, P2 to learn anything from it. He already knows the share that he, he will eventually get, right? That he will eventually output. We only want P1 to learn uh, this value. So we want to, him to learn Z1, Z1, which is an XOR uh, between uh, uh, this star. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, let me underline P1's inputs. They are here. Okay. Uh, Now, uh, this is uh, one out of four OT, what do you need here? Okay, this box. Why is it a one out of four OT? These inputs are pointers. 
there are zero, the, the, what are the possible four values for them? Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, because these are bits and um, each of the four is possible. These pointers point to, and exactly each pointer points to one string D1 that should be output by this. Here's the table. Uh, if, depending on x1, y1 uh, values, if these values are 0, 0, then what is the output that z1 should get? It is z2, xor, g indexed with x2 and y2. This is the value that p2 has. These are p2's shares. And P2 knows the G table. And on that index, the two directional index of P1, this is the value that P1 should get. If P1's index is 0, 1, what value should he get? Z2, X sort with G, the same, uh, the, the index here determined by X2 because X1 is zero, but the index on the second dimension is y zero, x sort one, and so on and so forth, right? For one zero, this is z two, x sort g x two, x sort one, comma y two, and for one one, I have z two, x sort g of x two, x sort one, and y two, x sort one. So for each of the four combinations of the shares of P1, there is one value that now a deterministic uh, function of that is a particular string that P1 should be outputting as a share. So this is exactly uh, four out of uh, one out of four OT. Call this value M00, call this value M01, call this value M10, and call this value uh, M11. And uh, what you need here is, is a protocol, right, where uh, uh, P1 inputs an index uh, i which is basically either 0 1 uh, 2 or 3 right this corresponds to 0 0 this to 0 1 uh, this to 1 0 this to 1 1 uh, p2 has four messages m0 m1 m2 m3 so I'm just relabeling the M0, M1, M2, and M3. And the one out of four OT, one out of four OT uh, gives nothing to the sender. So this is an OT sender. Uh, this is the OT receiver. And it should get MI. Uh, to the uh, P1, and uh, we are done. Except that uh, you know we we've seen uh, one out of two OT, not uh, one out of four OT. Uh, but um, uh, okay, exercise number one: construct. Uh, one out of four OT uh, from uh, one out of two OT generically. So don't care how the one out of T OT is achieved. The moment you have it, you can easily implement one out of four OT. In fact, you can uh, implement one out of N OT. Um, exercise, um, 
using se several instances of this one, just uh, put together in a correct way. Exercise two, uh, upgrade uh, uh, one out of two OT from uh, DDH to one out of four OT from DDH at, uh, you know, zero cost. Okay. Uh, the particular homomorphic uh, encryption, I mean, any additive homomorphic encryption, you can uh, just see that you can make it so that uh, instead of just having two choices for the bit, for the, for the indicator of the receiver, if you had N, uh, so just do it at N. Yeah. Uh, it is the same stuff you can reuse, okay? So I will leave you with that because um, you can and should uh, do this just to you know get a better feel for this stuff. And um, and once you have this block, uh, well then the whole computation uh, can is just the recursion of of this block for every gate. Uh, I have a question. Uh huh. Um, so in the in certain literature, they they refer to something called uh, uh, they refer to uh, garbled circuits, right? To What's what? The diff they no, refer no. to garbled circuits, right? Garbled circuits. That's next. That's yeah. Okay. This so is not a garbled circuit uh -huh. yet. Okay. So what is the exact distinction between oblivious transfer because I, I i've looked through a little bit of garbled circuits and oh, it seems very similar to yeah, the yeah. instruction of so uh, the uh, garbled circuit secure computation uses the same tool of ot mm -hmm. but in addition it uh, it uses uh, something called garbling it's a it's a form of encryption of a circuit if you will Okay. Okay. It's, uh, it's a very interesting primitive that uh, it allows you to garbling of a circuit allows you to, uh, well, like it's like a homomorphic encryption where you give the garbled circuit uh, to someone, and then if you give them a, a ungarbled values corresponding to one input string, then they can on, uh, compute the circuit for that one input string, but on no other inputs. Mm. Uh, and you, the guy who created the garbling, you don't know necessarily which, if you transfer the degarbling of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the input wires using OT, and so OT will be a crucial tool there, then you don't know which input string the evaluator has, but you know that he has only one. And so the evaluator will uh, compute the garbled circuit for this one input. And this uh, you know, gives you secure computation because you know, we always wanted that, yes, the bad players can contribute their inputs however they want, but it's executed once and they get some output for a single computation of F for, you know, these fixed inputs. The engagement of P1 in the computation does not allow these guys to query and to go and compute for one version of these and then another and then a third and then a fifth. And perhaps this way, essentially learning more and more and more information about this input. No, it's a single, computation. So whatever is leaked, it's it's a single computation, right? For single a single input. Uh, that's what garbled circuit is going to guarantee. And uh, it is more complicated, but not so much more. It's a big difference uh, between them is that that this computation was interactive. That we had to uh, yeah we could do all level of a circuit all at once because the OT is corresponding to this gate, OT is corresponding to this gate, et cetera, can be done in parallel. However, I, nobody quite knows how to pre-compute this stuff. 
uh, based on because the secret sharing of this uh, wire is not yet created. So, uh, so this whole uh, level of the circuit has to wait. In a Yao circuit garbling, we can take the whole circuit, regardless of the depth, and create one object that is transferred in just one round. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you for that high level overview. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, I had a question. question okay. About that. So uh, in this case, it, it will be very slow, right? Because we are running OT on every single gate. Correct. But so if we use garbled circuits, that will improve. Yes, that will improve as well. But um, there is one uh, thing that we will want. So the OT that I showed is from is from a public key encryption, right? Mm -hmm. And it costs you as much as a public key encryption. If you have to, if you have a circuit that has, you know, hundred thousand gates, now you have to do hundred thousand times a small factor public key encryption. Uh, this has both a terrible bandwidth and uh, and 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 computational cost. Uh, uh, there is something we were going to talk soon about. It's called OT extension. So first of all, you cannot do an OT cheaper than with public key encryption. It's uh, here we showed that given the homomorphic public key encryption, you can get OT. In fact, these two are very closely related. OT essentially implies that public key encryption. Hmm. Uh, so you cannot get uh, it faster. However, there is beautiful results for so-called OT extension. What this will show is that you can perform just security parameter worth of true OTs, so let's say 100, and from that you can hook it up, and afterwards you can perform arbitrary polynomial time number of OTs uh, using only symmetric key cryptography. So it's like a hybrid mm -hmm. encryption. I encrypt a small key and then use symmetric key encryption to encrypt the rest. Here I will use the real OTs, the public key OTs for, uh, you know, 100 times, and I will hook it up and use symmetric key encryption to extend. And if I need, if I have 100,000 gates in a circuit, uh, this 100,000 it will be done using symmetric key crypto based mm -hmm. on just 100 initial OTs performed all in parallel right. uh, using the more expensive stuff. So at least this still doesn't keep you, get you out of the bandwidth cost, but at least it basically amortizes the cost of public crypto. Okay, thank you. Okay, right, so uh, see you next week. See you.